Good night. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and good morning everyone and welcome to quite literally your sunrise safari and what a beautiful morning it is. My name is Amy and behind the camera today with me is of course some Paul. There we go. And uh, we have been sitting here enjoying this beautiful sunrise. So let's take a moment to just watch the sky. Take in all the sounds. There's quite a few birds calling as a new day dawns in Africa. Just a reminder to everyone that this is of course a live and interactive safari so as we go along this morning please do make sure you send through your comments and your questions you can use the wild earth app uh, the youtube chat stream uh, or the wild earth website and you can also join the conversation on twitter or x using the hashtag wild earth We are about to get the first glimpse of the sun, I think, very, very soon. It's going to pop up just above the clouds. Laura Moore, I absolutely agree with you. It is just beautiful. And there it is everybody. I can see the first little bit of a big ball of fire coming up now just above the clouds. And this is my first proper sunrise since being on Juma. We've had so much cloud in the sky and it is wonderful to be able to sit here and enjoy the first rays of light coming through the trees there's a bit of mist as well just below the where the sun is to the left and right all the cold air that sunk down during the evening 
You can actually see it a lot more clearly now that the sunlight is coming through. Linda, it is indeed such a pretty sunrise. And there's something about a sunrise that just holds the hope and possibilities of a brand new day. And for us, all the possibilities of the things that we may see out on drive. And Paul and I were just discussing before we started the show how amazing it would be to see some wild dogs today. It feels like one of those mornings where a pack should show up somewhere, maybe even on these very clearings that we are sitting in in the moment. Who knows? Gav, it is indeed really a relaxing view. I, oh, I'm feeling very calm, Paul. Are you also feeling very calm? Yeah. Hey, it just puts every life, life perspective a little bit. And um, it is so good, I think, to take the time to enjoy a sunrise every once in a while. Of course, in this job, early mornings are part of the deal. But like I say, we actually haven't been able to see the sunrise for a few days now. Joe, it's an absolute pleasure. It is our privilege to be here. And we're so glad that we can spend another day out in the bush with you all along for the ride. Now I can hear quite a few different bird calls. There are some magpie shrikes calling. I heard a black-headed oriole. So everything's starting to wake up and give us the dawn chorus as it were. Well, the day is full of potential, everybody, but let's see what the weather is doing today. At a tree house uh, dam at the moment. So I'm just listening here uh, because we've got a very um, uh, interesting information here at the moment. So, what I picked up on from one of the guides this morning. But anyway, good morning, everybody. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got uh, Panda. So, what's happening now this morning? So, one of the guides told me last night that um, he saw Tlaramba, uh, a beautiful female leopard. Um, that hangs around here. I'm sure a lot of you know Tlalamba, the Queen of Juma, and he saw her just south from where we are now. And she's got suckle marks and she's got milk pouch. So she's had cubs. Um, we are going to try and follow up on that this uh, this morning. It seems like she's come north again, and it's in this area, it's coming towards the the inflow of uh, Trials Dam. So <sighs> can imagine that now. Leopard cubs can imagine. So I am going to help this uh, gentleman out and see if we can locate on Tlalamba. But for now, we are just going to sit here at Trias Dam and just uh, enjoy the scene. Okay, I'll do apologize. I'll be on the radio quickly. Uh, so she's, you say uh, tracks are coming back north on Shabami, eh? Uh, 
Uh, sorry, Clayton, I was just quickly live there. Um, I saying coming back uh, north, eh? Huh? I think he's off the vehicle. Yo, 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 yo. Well, this could be very interesting. I can't wait to get out there now and uh, go and follow up on this. Mm. Debbie, yes, and uh, trust me, the 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 um, the source of the information, um, I I trust a hundred and ten percent. It's another gentleman that's very well qualified, been in the bush for many years, and he knows when a leopard's got suckle marks, when a leopard's got uh, a milk pouch, he will know very quickly that that is the case. It's not. Uh, just, it's not a guess. Uh, a guess. It's not guesswork. It's more straightforward. It is. So, well, hopefully we get. I'm hoping that we can get going and to try and follow up on her. But we'll see. But for now, we're going to just see a sit at Trials Dam. I'm itching to get out. <laughs> I want to go and follow up. Victoria, yeah, it's not a breath of wind this morning. Not a breath of wind. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunrise this morning. It's a beautiful day. And as you saw with Amy, uh, it is stunning. It is stunning. It is a perfect day for for a lot to happen. I can imagine just can imagine, we've got leopard cubs, we've got lion cubs on Juma. Oh my word. It is like Christmas has come early. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if we can find Lumber with the Cubs, oh, oh Cub or Cubs, uh, I'll be just, yeah, over the moon. And I shall not give up on this. Uh, Clayton, Clayton. I've got a feeling this this block in where the where the buffalo hit me the other day. I've got a feeling this block, somewhere in this block, it's not always in the drainage line. If they have to have cubs, it's not always in the drainage line. Sometimes it might just be in the block somewhere, using a termite mound, using a little. You know, I can say thick little area. So apparently, she came into the block here. The station coming to Charles Dam. Copy me. Copy. Oh, no, no, I can copy you now, no. Um, yeah, nothing coming out this side. You say coming straight north into this block, huh? No, she came out of this block directly south of us. I haven't picked up in Konzo coming back north, but this is pretty much directly yeah. south of us. Yeah, exactly to your left hand side. This drainage line apparently she's had before the in this drainage line, yeah. So yeah. I'll I'll do so if you gotta do that side I'm gonna do elephant carcass uh, road just to the north of here.
fucking pick up trucks uh, over here. But, yeah. All right, copy that. Sorry, just talking to the gentleman who's going to try and follow up on exactly where she came out from. Such exciting news this morning about Lalamba. Oh my word, I wish Cedric and Panda all the luck in the world. I hope we can come right with following up on her. Um, who knows, we might bump her as well, but uh, it's all in a morning's work. So I'm really hoping that we can find out what the story is if she's denning, where that is, what's happening, how old are the cubs, who knows. So it's a very, very exciting situation. So I'm sure we're gonna be getting updates from Cedric as soon, he ha as, soon as he has anything to share with us. Now, we are heading down towards uh, the Twin Dams area. I'm gonna head off and um, take a road to our left-hand side. Um, and Twin Dams is more south in the reserve from where we started off this morning but I'm taking a slow drive really making sure that we're checking it's a beautiful clear morning as we showed you with that sunrise and um, it is the time now where things are coming out from their little um, places of sort of safety <laughs> refuge from the rain maybe predators are moving it's still nice and cool i've got my jacket on and um, i'm well at least still so we will see anna marie absolutely i would love to see a cat out and about this morning as well it would be very 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 awesome i am yet to see one since i've arrived so it's only been it's only my second day so i can't be too um uh, upset about that but hopefully today's the day like i say especially after the rain things like leopards even male lions will remark their territories because the rain has washed that scent away so it's a really important thing that they do and with with leopards males and females will have to move around again um, and so hopefully we'll maybe come across some tracks which would be ideal then we can follow up and see where they head check the areas check the road see crossing in and out and then get an idea of maybe where a cat is this morning Anna Marie just a few bumps here everyone hold on <sighs> hazel hazel you want to know if i know all the leopards in juma yet um i can't say that i've met them all but i have become quite familiar with quite a few of the names and the different characters that are around of course Miss Lalamba being one of the most famous I knew of her mother Tandy um, I also followed Wild Earth for quite a time before I moved up here and started guiding so I became quite a quite familiar with even the likes of Tangana and Hukumuri and all of those who um, are no longer with us but uh, more recently, I also met Nsumi. Um, I haven't met yet Kachava or Shadulu, but I'm hoping that in time I'll be able to meet all of um, these characters. So I, I actually got a whole list from Cedric. I was looking over uh, leopard and lion territories of not just Juma, but of the Sabi Sands Reserve. And wow, it's incredible when you actually see it on paper just how many leopards there are um, and lion prides as well and it really wow it, it, it blows your mind to know that all of those animals are out here somewhere and we just have to find them I'm also smelling the air uh, one of the things that we really can listen for, I mean listen, smell for, um, is, is 
is the smell of buttered popcorn and that is what a leopard's um, spray scent marking smells like it's actually very very pleasant Linda Poli, good morning to you you say it well it is feline Friday indeed it is and I'm hoping we can make that a reality for you if not this morning then definitely this afternoon but Cedric and I are both looking out he's following up on those updates about Lalamba which are really exciting and I'm looking for any tracks um, or signs that may be around and also any track and sign of um, wild dogs or reports maybe on the radio that we get or something like that so we are both on the hunt this morning hopefully luck is on our side Now, we've just come past a little pan here um, on my right. I thought maybe if there were any cats around, perhaps they might have stopped close by here for a little drink on their way, who knows. But no signs of anything at the moment. I'd also love to see some zebra and giraffe. I was just saying to Jordan this morning that um, I haven't seen any of those yet since arriving here. Of course the weather has played a massive factor in that. So maybe today with the sun coming out and heating up nicely, we'll be able to maybe see if we can find some zebra and giraffe for everyone. No. Frankie, you say Dreamer is stunning this morning. Absolutely agree with you. And I don't know, just me, <laughs> but I feel like the rain made everything a lot better again. Just brought that little bit of life back. And that's what water does. That's why it is so important. I believe we are focusing on water and all of its amazing um, attributes in giving this planet life. Ooh, just hold on for a few bumps there, everybody. We've got some roots in the road. But this morning, Jume is really showing off. And it really is such a beautiful area. We're just driving next to a dry riverbed here. It's a little bit thicker, more dense. So I'm just taking it slowly because this is habitat, prime habitat for a leopard. So I am checking the trees, I'm checking the ground, sorry I'm poor, there's just a, there we go, there was an overhanging branch there, um, also checking the road for tracks. It's quite exciting I must say. Thank you so much for saying hello um, a very good morning to you as well it's so good to know that you're watching and I really hope that you enjoy the show today fingers crossed we get something epic to show you all
All right, coming up to Twin Dams now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try and backtrack the tracks that uh, the, the gentleman had uh, or he had Columba last night. He actually had her physically last night coming down the roads, one of the roads, or the southern road here called Gary Main. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually go into that area and backtrack the tracks quickly and just to see where she's come out from. So I might be off the vehicle for a while. I'm sure Amy will do well to continue giving some amazing sightings here, but I just want to, I really want to go and do a little bit of footwork um, and to see where she's come from. Nothing's coming from the north. There's nothing coming from Treehouse Dam. I've got a feeling maybe in this drainage line here that's just to the west of us from uh, Twin Dams. So I want to go and give it a bit of a go that side and to see if I can find a... No, no, no problem. No, it's no problem, Jordan. It's just that I'm going to be... I'm just telling Jordan quickly now, director, that I am going <laughs> to... I'm going to be off the vehicle. I'm going to do some footwork on this because uh, to find uh, where she's where she's coming from and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be very, very important and we might get lucky. So, <laughs> Pierre, it's going to be an absolute uh, treat. But Pierre, it's not just going to be an absolute treat. It's it's going to it's going to be speechless, speechless if this has to happen. So let's uh, cr cross fingers. And I don't think she would have it in little. If she had her cubs now, I don't think it would be in little Gary because there's too much pressure for. For this side, uh, from another leopardess called Langa, so she won't have uh, she won't have a cubs this side. She she'll have it here, and she went down this side and she's come out. And Chad had her tracks as well the other day, like three four days ago, coming out from here. So uh, it just it feels like this drainage line that's just north of us here, and there's no tracks going further north. So. This area, this area. Sandra, we'll try. We will try. We will try. Uh, standing by. So I'm just trying to listen to the other guide as well. He's busy helping me in the area to see if we can get where, she, where, where she's gone. To. Uh, so he said he saw her last night just, just west from this side here. While we try and follow up on these tracks, sorry, I'm just like so focused on uh, trying to s not miss anything here. I think while we do this, let's head over to Amy. Thanks, thanks, Cedric. And um, Cedric's actually going to be 
heading off for a little walk and going to see if um, he can follow up on foot a little bit more on those tracks and that so we'll hopefully get an update from him um, and anything hopefully positive news uh, from him so you are going to be with me for the next little bit and we have come across a little herd of impala yeah, uh, in our path and since it is the first mammal for us this morning I said let's just stop and have a look they are such beautiful antelopes and now that it's not raining you see the first bit of light landing on them and we've got it seems to be a mixed herd here there are males and females only females I can see right now but quite a few have actually moved off into the bush on our right as well You can actually see if you look closely on their coats that this morning these impalas aren't very glossy. Now usually when we see them um, on a really warm day they've got these beautiful silk-like coats that are shining in the sun. But today they've got what I like to call a matte look to them. And that is because they are currently trying to keep warm. Now, I did say it was a little bit chilly. I've still got my jacket on. And what these impalas are doing is that they actually have basically their fur, all the little hairs that make up their coat, um, are, are standing up to try and trap in the warm air. And so that's why their sheen has been lost. And they're a little bit matte now this morning but later on once the sun really comes through and we start heating up into the high 20 degrees celsius even 30 degrees they'll go nice and shiny again and i'm sure this afternoon we'll see some very shiny happy impalas I didn't catch the name there Jordan if you can just go again with a name I believe the question is which antelope has the thickest coat Liz Liz hi Liz um I'm not actually sure Liz, but if just based on what I've seen out here, particularly talking about um, in Africa, in Southern Africa with the, the animals that we see out here, I'm sure in the world there are some antelopes with, you know, very shaggy coats um, to keep them warm in some cold places. But here, I would have to say it would be the waterbuck. They've got quite a shaggy coat in comparison to other antelopes that seem to be quite... Um, a lot shorter and more compact whereas to me the waterbuck has the thickest fur um, it's a it's well adapted to 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 what they need but it's um, it does seem a bit more fluffy they've got more hair around the neck that sort of thing so Liz I would have to say that um, for us out here it would be the waterbuck Now that little one that's walking there, it's just going off to the left. And that little one, oh, we will reposition shortly everybody. Um, there are some more coming out on our right. But that little one that we saw, um, there's a few of them around. Actually the calves, uh, the lambs, sorry, that were born in December of last year november december last year and they've grown up so quickly diane you had a question um that does the rutting behavior of impalas 
attract predators and yes it most certainly does in fact when that rutting behavior begins now we are looking at a female there you can see there's no horns on the head that do see um, there is quite a large male in the bush on my right but he's just completely behind this um, African wolf. so we're not going to be able to show him unless he comes out but there is a, a, a large ram here with this herd and um, they focus all their energy, all their sort of um, focus uh, and time is spent trying to um, be dominant over a herd or fighting with other males to, you know, um, show that they earned the mating rights for a particular herd. So they're running around, they're making these weird grunting, snorting noises. Um, they're very worried about keeping their females all together. And hopefully in um, April we'll be able to show you a little bit of that behavior. It is actually quite hilarious. But Diane, back to your question, that yes, um, in that time, because all their energy and all their focus is on that, often we see impala males or uh, rams being targeted by things like leopards or lionesses. So um, it does put them at risk a little bit more than other times of the year. All right, I'm just going to pull forward to give us a bit of a better view here, everyone. Just going to go nice and slowly. Slowly. Don't make too much noise. There are some on our right as well. Oh, Kim, you just love impalas. That's so great to hear. That good and poor or more? more okay, just gonna move a little bit more forward, everybody. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and then we just have to give them a little bit of more time to adjust to our presence as well. They do tend to slowly move away from vehicles and just into sort of the surrounding area, but hopefully, if we don't move too much more then we'll be able to get them more comfortably on the screen for you all although they are all crowding together there underneath the tree oh I can hear a wildebeest busy gnawing, which is the sound that they make Adam, you want to know if we ever spot impalas on their own or if they always are together? Um, I must say, Adam, when it comes to females, I, I have see, thought I've seen a female on their own, but later on as you go around the corner or something like that, it turns out that there are um, more around or at least two or three more that are together with the lone female that seem to be alone but when it comes to males i've definitely seen uh, an impala ram completely on its own and that tends to happen a little bit more now in this um, rutting season and then what eventually um, sometimes happens is those lone males will group together and form what we call uh, little bachelor herds of impalas And often those are some younger males, the ones that aren't quite so big, um, their horns are a little bit smaller.
there's some beautiful birds all calling now they're starting to really it's the bush is really starting to come alive like i say i think today we're going to find some uh, some wildebeest maybe a journey of giraffes there's one impala that's looking right at us oh it just turned its head And the grass is still so long everyone I mean these impalas are really not that far from us Anna Marie you are really looking forward to the rutting season it is an exciting time um, it is something that you can't miss if you're out here in the bush it definitely is um, it sort of takes over uh, you hear those rams all rutting well I guess that's where the name comes from it's a name given to that specific sound um, that they make and it really is so entertaining <laughs> males are just acting bananas really their horns are bashing into bushes and they fighting with each other and those fights can be quite serious as well really it's um it's not always fun and games that's for sure i am going to reposition once again and pour And it's so nice to just see these impalas doing their thing waking up this morning oh there are actually some that are coming from the left hand side I think they may come across the road yeah just south of Trials Dam I'm so busy with the other guys at the moment. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right, I'm going to leave the area. I'm not getting an opportunity for this. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave the area for where it lumber came out, and uh, I'm going to move on with our drive and see what else we can find. Standing by. You guys didn't get any lucky with the. Uh, no, negative, uh, nothing. Because she's moved into Juma a couple of days ago, but she hasn't crossed back to Ponte Safari. You see many now almost every day on the road. Uh, the most tracks are going back out that side. Hey, all right, copy. Um, yeah, it's, I'm just going, I'm just working around uh, Twin Dam's area at the moment, just to double check, yeah. All right, just going to let another guy know exactly what's happening here. Uh, all right, well, let's go sit at Twin Dams and go enjoy the dam area. I think uh, putting there at the water. And maybe something coming down that side. All right, let's head over, let's back let's head back to Amy. Well, we were just moving off um, up the road, and we spotted this female that was still feeding here at the edge of this bank. Doing a bit of grooming as well this morning, getting rid of all of the maybe bits of water that are left there, maybe some displaced fur just due to all the moisture around. Oh. 
Well, they are now moving actually behind us, but I think what we are going to do is carry on up this road um, and then actually turn and come back down almost parallel to us. I really want to check this block to our right hand side um, back down towards the riverbed. It's a good area. I'm, I've got a feeling, everyone, I've got a feeling uh, that we might um, stumble across some tracks or even something exciting. So I just want to check, especially around a riverbed like that. Um, it's a great area for something like a leopard. And it's often while you are doing one thing that you may come across some other things. So who knows? I did hear that wildebeest um, calling up here earlier, maybe a territorial male in this particular spot. which smaller creatures and then you broke up there Jordan so if you can just finish off that question for me please After the rains, which smaller creatures appear typically after the rains? Ooh, I'm gonna have to think about that one. <laughs> um, oh, you know what we do often see after rain is tortoises, and sometimes even little baby ones that is a, a, a smaller creature that I would say we definitely sometimes see on a day like today once the rain has passed and all of a sudden the tortoises are moving around to get water because there's now rain um, that's pooled in places and things like that and because they are so vulnerable generally they try to get to the closest water source they can um, and luckily for them, I mean, there's a lot of water around now since yesterday. So um, that would be the little creature that I would think of that we often see after rain, Naomi. <laughs> Daniel, yes. Indeed, definitely. Sometimes we see um, worms. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it again, is millipedes. So they often also come out in the rain. In South Africa, we call them a songololo, a songololo. And uh, they also sometimes definitely come out. I know um, often at perhaps your your home Dan, or in a place where there's a nice sort of soft soil with a lawn we often sometimes see earthworms as well oh everybody this area is so beautiful I can't tell you how amazing it is to be here Yes, you are also right now. All the, I'm remembering these things, um, and in fact, Anna Marie, the, the um, giant lands we saw went up yesterday. Can you believe it? And I thought, oh wow, he's out because of the rain. And there we go. You are 100% correct. So there are actually quite a few creatures now that we're chatting about it that do tend to come out um, once there has been some fresh rain.
We're just driving on my left hand side there is a dry riverbed here and we're actually driving alongside it which is very cool because I can peer down and check if there's anything there. Alright everyone, we are, oh there was a big bird that just flew out the tree, there's a whole bird party happening here as I'm driving and I was just hoping that maybe we could show you one or two of them. I can hear a black headed oriole calling so beautifully in this tree and I just, oh can we, do you think we can try? I don't, can you see him, the little yellow one there? Not. It's just unfortunately a little bit far everyone, but there's a beautiful um, black-headed oriole calling. I'm actually going to show you what they look like in the book because it really is so pretty. <clears throat> um, And Paul's just showing you the tree that I'm talking about and black-headed orioles have such a beautiful call it's almost it's difficult to describe but it's the one that was calling now and I'm poor, I've got it here in the book just to show everyone because it really is such a pretty bird and it's this one here in the bottom right is that good there we go so this is the black-headed oriole and of course named after that black head and it's got this beautiful um, bright sort of red orangey beak and then this beautiful golden color as well and the pictures on the left show you a little bit about how it um, catches spiders over here on the right hand side and um, the left with a with a bee actually and a whole bunch of pollen on its face as well so that's the bird that um, has been calling non-stop here on our right hand side and a beautiful bird it is indeed thanks and Paul I can hear orange breasted bushrack at the moment as well it's such a wonderful day and the Everything. it's just now the birds are calling it's a happy day out here on Juma So nice to hear all the birds and and that sort of thing again it was a bit quiet yesterday in terms of sounds Thank you, Jamie, and uh, yeah, we are just still trying to follow up on any signs of where lumber has come out from, and uh, so far no luck 
but uh, uh, it takes a bit of time. This is not a uh, like a immediate thing. Well, Chela was, but uh, it takes a little bit of time just to follow up on or what you are busy tracking here and seeing exactly what's played out. So you have to kind of, you have to put the whole story together. You have to try and see. So just looking at the area, oh, should be fine. Be fun. So you have to try and to, try and put everything together. Where did Tlalama come out? Um, where's the track? Where's the last tracks? And all those things. So uh, it, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, standing by around. Okay. Sorry, yeah, it's another gentleman saying he's leaving the area. So I, I'm busy in the, in the Molawati drainage line. Always important. I think drainage line is always important to do. Anna Marie, yes, thank you so much. Let's see, let's see, let's see what plays out here. Let's see. It's, as I say, it's not a, it's not something that's just, and a little bit of uh, investigation going down here, and just to understand what is actually happening in this area and uh, yeah let's see let's see let's see all right we're gonna find, uh, I think I have to get up here hold on panda there we go up we go up we go I'm just doing some of the areas that La Lamba that uh, leopard is she knows and he uses quite a bit and all that so yeah uh, let's go, go down on the Mamba Road, yeah? yeah. Uh, let's go a little bit further on, yeah. Copy guy, Dion. No, we just uh, we're trying to uh, land. Uh, we're trying to remember exactly where from, and um, oh, yeah, uh, it's so difficult. I don't know. Somewhere close to Trials Dam area. Oh, sorry, go again. Uh, sorry, Dion, can I go in with your message? Yeah, I'm, I'm on Mumba Road now, I'm just going to take a look this side. So I'm just kind of explaining to one of the gentlemen exactly what we're busy doing this morning and uh, knowing that we're trying to track uh, to lumber down. Sun is sharp this morning. Very, very sharp. Uh, Elsa, well, Plumber's had cubs, so um, the father. Well, we've seen Plumber mating with uh, with with Mulwati, so. I say 80% more whitey, 20% maybe in Gobotswan, another male that's just uh, to the south of us. Either one of them. But I'd say more whitey because we pretty much witnessed a uh, mating with them last.
So she'll go in. Maybe she'll come in from the south, maybe to the eastern area. We'll do the eastern boundary quickly. Let's take a look if we don't pick up on any tracks that side. Sorry, the sun is so sharp in my eyes here at the moment. Very, very sharp. Panda, what do you think? Let's do the eastern boundary, eh? Yeah, let's do the eastern boundary. Leave the area. Let's let's leave the let's leave the area. All right. Well, we go to the eastern boundary. Let's head over to Amy to see what's happening with, uh, yeah, so Sunrise Safari. Thanks, Cedric. And I'm sorry that you haven't had any luck that side with the search, but the facts are that Salamba was seen last night and she had those suckle marks and apparently she was off the tee, although I think that's what Cedric's going to go check on the other boundary so that we can know um, if she is, of course, around. There are just a few trees. <clears throat> um, we, on the other hand, are still cutting through this block, so up now on this road and hoping that we find something along the way like I say even though at the moment it might seem a little bit quiet I think there's a lot of potential today Yvette, you want to know if we ever come across snakes on safari and yes, most certainly we do. Um, it's not super often, but of course on a vehicle, maybe not as, as, as common as when you're out sort of walking maybe or more close to um, the bush where you can notice things like snakes. But I have seen, um, sorry, there's just a, a tree in the way here. I'm just going to reverse quickly. Um, I have seen something like a puff adder um, on the road. I have seen um, a big black mamba as well. Um, actually in a riverbed that I was driving in and it just came across and it was like so huge <laughs> black mambas can get so big um, and maybe like four meters or so in in length and I just remember um, uh, my tracker was sitting in the front and oh my word like when that snake came across and like m what mambas do they tend to actually almost sit up as it were um, and almost three quarters of them are in the air and when you're eye to eye with a black mamba I can't tell you how quickly uh, my tracker got into the front seat next to me he just crawled over the bonnet it was amazing uh, but yes we definitely do see snakes out on drive <laughs> <laughs> Jordan says she would be absolutely terrified if that happened to her. Uh, yeah, it is something that you actually can't believe that a snake can be so tall. <clears throat> you often think of snakes being on the ground. And I'm yet to actually find a snake on drive here at Juma. Uh, it is 
something that if we do happen to find one how cool would that be to be able to show you all at home another snake that we tend to see as well is um, pythons some incredible sightings with pythons as well that have been had in the past I've heard crazy stories about them being able to take down impala well yeah take impalas or actually eat an impala which just seems ridiculous but possible nonetheless now we're back down in this oh, riverbed just hold on it's a bit bumpy There's also lots of signs of elephant, I must say. Um, lots of fresh dying and tracks around. I was hoping that we might see there were tracks heading this, um, but I have not yet been so lucky to be able to see an elephant just yet. But I have a feeling that all of a sudden the animals are just going to come out and you're going to see plenty of them. It is such a beautiful day. you want to know if I remember my first ever safari hmm I think my first ever sort of uh, game drive experience would have been in um, <clears throat> well quite a few years ago but in one of the national parks in South Africa um, the sort of lodge safari experience I've only really had as a guest <laughs> twice in my life um, but which I've been very lucky to be able to to experience um, but my first time on sort of an open vehicle out in the bush would have been oh I must have been about 12 or so I think that's when you're allowed um, to go on the open vehicles if I'm not mistaken and <clears throat> that would have been probably in Addo Elephant National Park that is where uh, one of the closer reserves to where I am from in the Eastern Cape of South Africa Ooh, 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 ooh. we've got a little red batch oh okay oh, poor this bird gave me a heart attack I thought it was gonna fly away from us this is a beautiful red backed shrike everyone and he is just perched here at the end of the spike thorn tree and I can tell you it's a male because they're the ones with the specific coloration like this. The females look a little bit different. They're a lot more plain um, and have almost these little, uh, what looks to be um, scales or little shadows of scales going down the front of the chest. Now shrikes, one of the particular features of them is their bulls. Oh Trish, it is a stunning bird, isn't it? 
How beautiful. And this morning light is just doing all the things. Hey, Mpo. <laughs> Um, shrikes have quite a distinctive bill and it's almost it's quite th thick or rounded and then it's got this little point at the end hook at the end of it And this bird is not here all year, it is a migrant, so we only see them now in our summertime. Oh Linda! I'm so happy that we can show you this beautiful red-backed shrike. It is one of the birds that actually does perch really nicely. Uh, just like a lilac breasted roller is another one that often will just sit on a perch, which is fantastic news for us when trying to show you it. Oh, Mandy, you want to know which bird do I think has the most interesting call? Hmm. Well, I suppose one of the most interesting and possibly, which is my favorite call, is the gorgeous bushrack. I love it. It's quite dynamic. And then also actually that black-headed oriole that we were talking about earlier also has a very interesting call. It actually is quite beautiful. And one of the key features of, um, well, this shrike as well as the lesser grey shrike, which basically looks very much like this bird, except it doesn't have the red back, it has a completely grey back, and it's a little bit larger in size, is that sort of black eye stripe that runs all the way from the bill down um, across the face. And that immediately you think, oh, that's a shrike. Another bird that has that feature is a bee eater, but a completely different shaped bill. Thank you, Amy. And um, okay, so you know, with the lumber, is what I had to work with uh, this morning. I, don't, I feel it was not enough to really um, follow up properly for for where she's come from and all that. It, it, it's very minimal. Um, 
the only thing I had was uh, her tracks on the southern side where the gentleman had her, where, where he had her last night and coming out from Juma in, onto Gary Main and that's the only thing that I had to work with this morning and so uh, it's just yeah you know if you don't if you if you don't have um, enough evidence and tracks and uh, time and all that uh, it becomes very very difficult to to work out uh, where she's come from and all that so uh, I've left that but it gives me at least it gives me a, like a rough idea a rough idea on where to keep on looking you know during our drives so maybe this afternoon tomorrow morning tomorrow afternoon you know the so forth so at least it gives us an idea on where we can look so if we see more tracks coming out from that area um, then we can start saying okay that's you know that's maybe um, the right area but yeah Mm. Exactly, giraffe call. Exactly. Uh, I think Columba is Columba. You know, she, if she feels it's the right time for us to see her, to take us to the, the, to the den, then, then, it, then it's going to happen. So, no, no use trying to, um, how can I say, not saying force it, but, um, you know, pursue the whole thing. So we, we, we just we, we're just going to leave it um, as it is, and continue with our safari. Um, as well as uh, Chiller's Den, um, all those flat areas there, and that spike thorn is all flat. So there's no new tracks coming in and out there. I've got a feeling that Chiller's also moved her den. Uh, maybe a little bit further up the uh, uh, Molawati drainage line. So there's also another thing just to look out for. Um, I think she's also moved to the area. So, well, because we did take a look at tracks and tracks going in and out, in and out, in and out that side. So, yeah, I've got a feeling she's also maybe felt that uh, her den site was not uh, efficient enough. But yeah, all those things will play out. That's what's amazing about uh, wildlife. We, you know, it's it's not a immediate gratification. It is something that to, it's just uh, we got to wait and see. Wait, it's a wait and see game. Wait and see. It's up to the animals. It's up to them to decide when it's the right time. And I, I love that. All right, we are at uh, Buffalzook Dam. Let's get my binoculars out. Let's see what's happening. Ooh, the sun is very sharp here as well. Mm. The sun is so sharp this morning. I think because of all the rain that we've had, that there's no, um, yeah, there's, there's there's no like dust and anything in the air. So the sun is coming out like like <laughs> straight on it is very sharp this morning my, my poor eyeballs feels like I'm I'm doing a little bit of squinting here but then anyway. all right let's see what we see at Bifflesuk Dam let's see if we can get something nice and interesting around here there's some one or two hippos here that's just gone under the water Actually, very peaceful this side. Kathy Lee, birds in the background. Sounds like starlings. So, I've got some starlings in the background. Ooh, there's two on the damn wall. There's two Natal spur files that's digging through elephant dung. Look at that, looking for little seeds. You can see how they use their feet, kicking open the dung, and pecking away. 
So you can imagine, it's like a buffet for them. The elephant eats all different kinds of uh, grass and leaves and all that. So in the elephant dung is stuff that hasn't been digested and it has been passed through. And now these two Natal spurfowls are at a buffet at the moment. A well, nice uh, selection of grass be uh, seeds and they are loving it. <laughs> you, can imagine, you can see that even the even the dung is getting chucked aside. Uh, loving it. Don't you like this, Jordan? This is amazing. <laughs> I know you, Jordan's enjoying this. Maybe a forktail Tronga has joined in. What is that one? It's got like something special there. Like the other one's very jealous of whatever that one picked up on. <laughs> it's the stall piece there. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Come on. Sharing is caring. Come on. <laughs> hmm. Oh, oh. Puffing out like that, showing dominance to the other one. Don't come to my to my buffet table. It's, this is all mine. like it's done. We actually are supposed to go look at the three banded plover nest yesterday. We clean forgot about it. Okay, I oh know that was birdie heaven that indeed. I think they were loving it there. Oh, now it's done. So I'm looking at one or two of the hippos aside, I just thought maybe we'll see all the youngster or redders. I don't know if be here, but once again, the hippos are very shy this morning. That's exactly what happened like yesterday afternoon. There was no movement. There was, uh, you just saw nostrils coming up and then going down. Yeah, Nina, there was uh, a big crocodile yesterday. I'm trying to look now at my binoculars. I can't see the crocodile. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's going to be so bad. The sun is, the sun is, yo, oh, Nina, the sun is so bad. We're going to, we're going to try. I'm going to ask Panda there on the inflow. There, it's outside the water. See that long thing? There, there it is. There's the crocodile. With the grey heron and you got the crocodile there. So yes, there's one big crocodile that side.
welcome back everyone and we have found a beautiful Batelier Eagle here perched on this dead knobthorn tree and just like many other animals including those impalas this morning he's having a bit of a preen and a clean and a neatening up and just have a look at that beautiful orange beak and face of this eagle what a stunning bird I think I think this has to be my favorite bird of prey trying to dry off from all the rain of yesterday and it is actually looking quite dry but now just making sure he's ready because I don't think that they would have got too much food to eat yesterday so I think today he's going to set off to the skies and hopefully find some food and this early morning is typical for birds of prey to be doing exactly what this battalier is doing and a little bit later on when the sun starts to heat up the air a little bit more he will set to the skies and head off to see if there's anything that they can find to prey on or actually scavenge off of battaliers are quite keen scavengers looking for carrion or any sort of dead organic material to feed off of now I say a he because we can actually tell Batalia uh, sexes apart based off of coloration on their uh, primary wing feathers and you can see that this particular bird has black all the way till his wingtips whereas females would have an extra band of white now we do know that there's a pair in this area I'm not sure where she is at the moment she may just be out of view but if you have a look closely just see how this bird is using its beak to comb through its feathers getting oil from that preening gland and then moving that through to coat them And then have a look at the bill do you see you know you often just think that it's just orange or red on the beak but have a look how the color fades all the way from the eye which is quite red and then it turns into sort of a an orange and then eventually it has a dark black right at the tip almost looks like a uh, color of a lava lamp or something like that <laughs> Hazel you find it amazing that these birds can stay perched even in heavy wind it is incredible but they do manage it and particularly birds of prey <clears throat> like this one they are very steady and have big claws and talons on their on their feet to be able to hang on quite effectively you can actually see over the eye there now there's it actually turns white in color and that's that nictating membrane that comes across to protect the eye I think it's almost a natural instinct when it goes down to preen and there the eye is black again now
Annalie, it is indeed such a beautiful scene, isn't it? And oh, with this battalia and the blue skies and the silhouette of the tree branches um, just makes for such a beautiful sighting this morning. And the sun is just catching this bird absolutely perfectly as well. Now, another name for the battalia is actually a short-tailed eagle. And if you have a look at those um, feathers that are coming down off the wing, you can see how they hang longer than the end of the tail of the battalia. Look at that, that very tip, the last primary feather there, actually goes all the way <clears throat> past the end of the bird's tail. And it's one of the ways, just based on silhouette, sometimes that we're able to identify the jizz of the bird, the general impression of shape and size. And when a battalier is flying, it is so beautiful to see the way they can use the air currents and they've got this amazing shape to their wing and very, very little tail. You almost don't see it at all in comparison to something like a Wahlberg's eagle, <clears throat> which has a very long, almost narrow rectangular tail when in flight, although they can fan it. Usually we see quite a long tail in that bird. Even a tawny eagle, very much a large fanned out tail um, that you can see, whereas on these Battalia eagles, uh, that tail is indeed very, very short. Hudson, you could watch this bird preen all day. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. It is fascinating. I'm sitting here with my binoculars, just having a, having a close look and taking in all the details of what this bird is doing. And it's amazing how accurate and precise they can be with their beak. And amazing how they can turn their head almost completely around as well. And when he lifts up his head to have a look around, when the sun catches that face, oh, it is just gorgeous. Well, everyone, we have enjoyed this so much. It really has been a treat, I think, to take time to enjoy this bird. Chris, you would like to know what's the biggest raptor in Africa. And Chris, that would be the Marshall Eagle, which is my other favorite bird of prey. And I would love to show you one of those. Um, if we are ever so lucky to have one um, here while I'm here in the next week, I will definitely do my best to show it to you and tell you all about it. But a martial eagle, they are, they stand head and shoulders above uh, this battalia and they are a beautiful, beautiful uh, combination of sort of, oh, hello. <laughs> Oh, that was quite funny. Um, a combination of uh, white and grey with little sort of speckles. Oh my word, now we're doing a wing stretch. I was thinking of actually heading off very soon, but now we've got a little bit of action here at this battalier. 
but I think maybe with all of that sort of that um, shake out and the wing stretch we may actually see this bird take off to the skies quite soon often what birds do or well, any birds but particularly you'd notice a little in birds of prey is that before they take off they'll actually make a poop I've seen it countless times, every single, often with tawny eagles, battleers, um, they'll, uh, they'll make a poop and then fly off. <laughs> Telltale sign that they're thinking of moving on. So we'll see what this bird does. But Chris, a martial eagle, and they, I think, oh wow, it's just moved to a beautiful new spot. Thank you very much. And now we can actually see the color on the legs as well. So he was thinking of moving, but not quite leaving just yet. everybody um, just to finish off uh, Chris on what I was saying about the martial eagle to give you an idea um, this battalia weighs about 1.8 kgs or so whereas a martial eagle is four four point seven uh, kgs in the female which is huge <laughs> um, Sorry, I said one point. He, uh, Batley has a wingspan of 1.8, but a weight of about two and a half kg. So the Marshall Eagle is a lot bigger. Anyway, we are going to leave this Batley to carry on with his beautiful morning. And we are going to send you over to Cedric to check in on how things are going that side. Thank you so much, Amy. Nice spending some time with a bird of prey. And uh, we find myself, we haven't had much luck from our side. Uh, we just came from Biffleswick Dam, yeah, from the northeastern corner of Juma. And uh, no luck so far for the, for the morning. No luck at all. So um, now I'm slowly heading along the northern boundary, heading in a westerly direction, heading to the northwestern corner, just to see maybe the Talamati uh, pride of lions have not come south because I know that they said last night they were coming south again. So he's going to go double check on that. As well, they said they've got no tracks of Shadulu uh, Leopardess and her son Nene on uh, Safari or Simobili. They, they assume that uh, those leopards are on Juma. So I'm going to go and give it a go this morning and I'm going to quickly go to the western area. Uh, just let uh, Jordan know that you can just tell Amy that I'll be on the western side of Juma. And I'm going to go and have a scratch around there for those two leopards. That's all right. Feline Friday, it, it has to start somewhere. Somewhere with something, somewhere um, in this area. Hey, Panda. It's got to happen here. It's got to happen. And it's going to happen with something remarkable. Remarkable. Maybe even all Marips. Just checking if anything has come down from this junction. Larry, I think leopard. 
If there's one, uh, if there's an animal that I love tracking, is a leopard. Oh yes, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I love that challenge, and because it's such an elusive cat, and tracking it down, and it's solitary, so you only got really one set of, a set of tracks that moves along the road or going through the bush. So I think the challenge is the the best part about it. So if you do track a leopard and you find it, the the I can say the enjoyment of that moment of finding that leopard becomes so much I can say rewarding. It's become so much more amazing. You know, it's it's just so good. It's a good feeling. So yeah, I think. I think tracking a leopard is, uh, for me, is, a, is it's the nicest thing to track. And uh, even lions, even lions, but lions are in a pride. So lions are in a pride. Tracking them down is nice. It always, it's, it's just a, a lot of, in, of a lot of enjoyment to that as well. And uh, you can't wait. But I think, to me, a leopard is always. It's always been the highlight for my tracking. Oryx pizza, Oryx, like a hems, like a hemsbok pizza. Oryx, Oryx. Oh, orange pizza. <laughs> I don't know, it's Oryx pizza. I would have thought about like a hemsbok pizza. It sounds very interesting. Oh, orange pizza. Orange Pizza, that's an interesting name. Orange Pizza, why will it, why? Orange Pizza? <laughs> I always got to think about this Orange Pizza, but uh, yeah, that's a very interesting name. Orange Pizza. Like what, do you like, do you... Ah, okay. That's quite interesting, I like it. I like it, orange pizza. Thought like something like a cheesy pizza. A cheesy cheese pizza. <laughs> a cheese pizza. Or an anchovy pizza. Mmm. Some anchovies. Orange pizza. I'm not too sure about that one. Alright, well we're gonna come up to Babab Dan, let's head over to Amy. Enjoy, Cedric. That sounds good. I too am on the lookout for elephants right now. Would be lovely. We've just arrived here in some clearings and I'm just having a look to see if I can spot anything like a zebra or a wildebeest. But it is so quiet. I think 
that with the weather that we've had and it is slightly chilly I know I've taken off my fleece but um, I am slightly regretting it now <laughs> we warmed up so nicely there uh, sitting in the Sun with that battalier and I actually was getting quite warm and now when you start moving again the chill factor from the wind does uh, impact one's uh, level of warmth or heat uh, but anyway I'm fine the Sun is getting warmer and warmer anyway my point of what I was trying to say is that I think by this afternoon when the sun has been out for a while we are going to see a serious increase in some of the animal life around Jumana. Just even me, you know, when it's, when it's a little bit chilly it's not so nice to get out and get going so early and as the day progresses uh, it's going to become more and more comfortable for animals to actually get out and um, get moving and doing their thing. Excuse the bumps everyone, we just going over a few corrugations and we're gonna take a left turn up ahead shortly. I'm gonna swing past a tree house dam and just have a look to see what we can find there. Wanga, I think is the name. You want to know if we carry firearms in case of an emergency? So, no. Um, we as guides for Wild Earth, because we are purely vehicle based, we don't um, carry firearms with us not necessary the vehicle is our protection in that way if anything is coming for us or charging or anything like that we can drive which is um, the best possible solution and if we were however walking or um, going to be off on foot for an extended period of time then um, it becomes necessary to carry a rifle uh, but no uh, Wanga at this point we don't carry uh, firearms with us on the vehicle as it's not necessary Ho. Here we go. Well, I can't tell you how nice the sun feels, everybody. It's been a while. I was saying to him poor yesterday, we can be quite um see when it comes to weather. We complain when it's raining, it's raining too much and then at the same time when it gets too hot, oh my word, that's also not enjoyable. But, but nevertheless, it is wonderful. Holly, you asking, I think it's if I have a favorite road in Juma. Jordan, if you can just confirm. A favorite road. Ooh. You know, Holly, I have to be very honest with you. I am still learning a little bit at a time um, as to exactly where I might like a road but not necessarily know its name however there was a road that I drove today which and I remember from the last time it was the same road that I really liked and I think it's called Nyala South and it's the one that I think follows the Mulwati River on the edge and you sort of look down over into the riverbed and at that at this junction where all these roads meet it's called spaghetti junction for that reason um, 
and it is absolutely area is just beautiful and I love that road so so far that would be my choice it's sort of in the middle eastern side southeastern sort of corner um, of Juma but I just love a riverbed anything to do with rivers water anything like that I just think it's so so beautiful Especially when you can drive in the riverbed oh it's so exciting you put the the vehicle into low range first gear and you just cruise So we shall see if maybe we can visit the Mulwati later on, maybe this uh, this afternoon. Although sometimes signal is a little bit tricky, so we have to be careful. But I do love driving in a dry riverbed. sudden gotten very quiet I must say before I was noticing quite a bit of the bird calls things like that but right now I can't hear anything like that there was also actually I forgot to mention a hyena calling earlier when we what did we We were doing, we were, I think it was bef just before we stopped for the Batalia actually. Oh no, the Redback Shrike, the Redback Shrike. And um, I was having a sip of my coffee and I said, ooh, I know that sound. That is a hyena. Sorry, I need to go the other way here. It's actually very beautiful Impala Ram feeding and looking right at us. Is the lighting okay or? Mm. All right, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit tricky to show you all that. The sun is right behind his face. I'll see if maybe we can see from the side. Unfortunately, not everyone. But it's just a beautiful impala, and the lighting on the grass is actually so pretty uh, with all the little dewdrops. What we're going to do now is actually head up towards uh, Gauri Dam. Just have a little scratch around there, maybe go over the dam wall onto the other side, uh, past that big jackalberry that uh, Cedric told me Salamba likes. <laughs> maybe just have a look there. There was also at one stage a giraffe that we always used to see in that area. Um, it had a bit of a wonky foot. I don't know if he's still around anymore.
That's nice. We've got some warthogs. The youngsters. And yeah, Sandy Patches was a female with the four piglets, so this is one of them. There's the second one. And there's the third. And there's the fourth. Or is it the stump? Ah, oh, there's a, uh, this warthog here. <laughs> I almost thought it was a stump. So she's still got her four piglets here. That's Sandy Patch. We actually saw them the other day. We saw them about maybe three, four days ago. And for a warthog to be successful in keeping all four youngsters alive is uh, very, very slim yeah, in the Sabi Sand, or in the, well, not just in the Sabi Sand, but in the Greater Kruger, because of all the predators. But she's been very, very successful here. Yeah. We've got the four youngsters around. Look at that hairstyle. That one, yeah, that's like an out of bed hair look. <laughs> that one on the left, like the others are all neat, but that one is just uh, mm, like Jordan's hair. It's just that one. <laughs> Jordan, no, I don't know, but sorry, but it's like the like the other three are very neat. They like, you know, the the the, the main is the hair's been like pushed down nicely on their back and on their head, but the one just seems like <laughs> is the rebel of the four. You can just see Marula short cake, yeah, uh, cake, yeah. It's nothing, nothing better. Just than watching some of these animals like the warthogs around here. Uh, exactly, Jordan. Jordan, you are the rebel warthog of Ravonia. <laughs> and that's uh, that's for sure. Uh, the hair like that. No, I'm just joking, Jordan. Funny enough, you'll actually be opposite. But yeah, nice to see them out here on the open clearing. The, the mom is just a little bit further forward or in front of them, but we can't see the mom. It's She's tucked away behind one of the bushes, so we can't really see her. But these four are just staying very, very close to one another. And like the success, the success rate for a female warthog bringing up a, 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 a litter like this, um, you know, it's it's very slim. You know, you usually always find that uh, she'll, at the end of the day, she'll actually end up with maybe one or two um, piglets left. But uh, for her to still have the four, and they're already getting to that a decent age, that's uh, very, very good on her. I just got all excited there now because uh, two of our staff members just came driving past us and heading towards the gate and it is Alex and uh, Trishala. They are heading out from uh, Juma this morning. And it was so, 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 so wonderful and awesome having the two of them around camp. So I was just very chuffed to see them off now. It's like safe travels. I'm pleased to see them very soon again. Where are they hiding now? Our mom's hiding behind there. Oh no. Oh, there you come. Is she coming out there? Oh, she's coming out. There's mom. There is mom. Warthogs and two birds. We also saw hippos, Jordan. Uh, and you saw me as well, so that's another animal. So you saw five animals this morning.
There's a little crazy hair warthog in the middle. They enjoy these sometimes these open clearings, nice and like open for them. So at least if there's anything, any predators coming in from the area, like any predators coming in, at least they can, uh, you know, pick up on uh, on that uh, on that predator much earlier than being really in the thick bush. So I feel way safer. So it's the same as impalas and all that. You'll always find them enjoying the open clearings. Barbara Brown, you say you love warthogs, yeah. No, they are amazing. Old Pumba, Mr. Pig. But I don't see any Mr. Pig, yeah. I actually want to see how many males are part of these, out of these four. So I'm going to get my binoculars out quickly. Very difficult to say. Oh, I oh, know. It's very difficult. They are just, uh, yeah, they're staying out of sight. You know, proper. They are just remaining behind some of the grasses uh, so it's easy like with one way to tell between males and females the males will have uh, two sets of warts on their head on their face and they'll find the females will just have the one set Well, they're actually all going to lie down now, eh? All resting. It looks like they're having a little bit of a a Friday morning uh, a rest here on the clearing. That's nice. Well, no, no, this one doesn't want to rest anymore. And maybe there's another vehicle approaching, that's why. Alright, well, we're going to slowly continue with uh, the western boundary here and see what else we can find along the way. I think let's head over to Amy to see if she had any more luck on her side with uh, maybe something exciting. Thanks, Cedric, and I'm so glad that you found some warthogs. They are super cute. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry about the hair comment, Jordan. I'm sure you have absolutely lovely hair that is not messy at all. Although we all suffer from a little bit of messy hair in the early morning, I must say. It comes with the territory of sleep, I suppose. Oh, I got your back, girl. Don't worry about it. Um, well, we've just passed that big jackalberry that I was talking about, everyone. And Paul's got his sunglasses on now, looking very, very sharp there at the back, and Paul. And the sun is out. It is so nice and warm. I'm really loving it. And I am looking for anything that we can find. Now yesterday, even though it was so rainy, <laughs> it's amazing how sometimes the most exciting things happen in the pouring rain. Uh, we were lucky to see that massive manor and on this road I've seen quite a few rhino middens, which is basically where those big male rhinos, like the one that we were able to show you yesterday, come and mark their territory. And basically it's their toilet and they use it over and over again and one big turtle will have more multiple um, middens in an area and part of his sort of territorial troll is to actually walk um, along his path from midden maybe and um, scatter his dung, spray urine, and he'll do that multiple times um, as he's on his patrol. 
and then there will be female rhinos as well that actually also come and defecate in the same area and that of where the rhinos get to know each other as it were they male can pick up um, scents of the female tree what's going Africa boasts myriad landscapes. From true forest to true desert. And countless stunning ecosystems in between. The savannas of East Africa are home to nature's most stunning spectacle, the Great Migration. These rolling grasslands are nurseries of abundant life. The woodlands of Southern Africa, sometimes verdant and sometimes desiccated, offer the most intimate insight into the lives of the continent's beloved wildlife. Wherever you are in Africa, the scenic majesty will take your breath away. Iconic African mammals live large in humanity's imagination. Across the continent, fascinating mammals have evolved to fill every conceivable niche. Their struggles for survival, natural and anthropogenic, mirror those of wildlife the world over. Because they are so beguiling, Africa's mammals have become ambassadors for the Earth's remaining wilderness. I do apologize for Losing signal there with Amy. I think she just went through a little bit of a, a bad spot. So, yep, you with us, uh, Panda and uh, myself, and uh, we are just uh, heading here, uh, still on the western boundary of uh, Juma. And we're just seeing, because the guys in the west said they haven't seen anything of Shadulu, that Leopardess or Nene that side. They feel that they are actually on our side, and that's not good. Because it, well, that is good, but it's not good that we haven't noticed that. That's the thing. And uh, I, I, I hate it when I know, it's like always, like Tristan and myself, we used to chat always about it. And we always said, it's nothing worse when you know that that animal, lions or a leopard, is on Juma. You know they're there, but you're not seeing them. That's why we always have to try and track them down. Because uh, if you know they're here, rather let's track them down, you know, rather let's put effort into it and find them, uh, finding them. So, yes. I never liked, I'd never like a, a rock not being turned over. I rather want to turn every, every rock to turn to be turned over. But talk about Trist. So I can't wait to have him back this side again. You never know. Yes, you never know. You never know. Oh, he's a, a good mate of mine. And uh, yes, really nice just to work alongside him again. Maybe he might come back. Maybe not. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Standing by, run, go. <laughs> no luck, sorry, man. I'm just live at the moment. Uh, yes, uh, Jordan, that is. I think uh, Tristan is as elusive as these uh, leopards around here. Yeah, I fully agree. Oh, yes, indeed. 
and being such a good friend of mine, you know, even for me, getting hold of him and trying to chat to him and all that, you know, he gives me the tandy slip every single time. So, Tristan, if you are watching, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Old Budgie. I used to call him Old Budgie. Means Bajiwe. Bajiwe means stuck. So if you get stuck, you get Bajiwe in Shangan. Ah, I get Bajiwe. And uh, I remember when he was working for Chitwa and I was at Nkoro, uh, he would even get uh, stuck on a road, a normal road like this. And uh, he, we would have to kind of pull him out of a. <laughs> out from wherever he got stuck and he did that a few times, quite a few times so eventually he got this nickname Budgie Budgiewe <laughs> uh, But he's been doing a lot of touring, that's one thing I can say. He's uh, really gone to take a look at quite a few places again. I think he went with uh, Lisa Antal and all of them. Went back to see the snow leopard. He's gone to India to take a look at the tigers. Very envious, envious over his, uh, his expeditions that he's been doing over the last few months very envious over that I mean I've never seen I've never seen a wild tiger in my life I've seen a tiger but that was many years ago when I was a little kid I went to go and see a tiger at a zoo which is I, I do not uh, at now now I don't see that as a sighting or as a as a like real tiger I, I'm unfortunately I'm very fussy over that it must be in the wild it must be something that's you know natural and all that um, so yeah, I've never seen a tiger if you have to put it that way. Jordan, have you seen a tiger before? Jo I think Jordan, I think Jordan will tell me about her tiger experience. Sure, maybe, maybe Jordan is a tiger. <laughs> Sorry, Jordan, I didn't copy what you were saying there earlier. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Don't. Ah, okay, we are. We can't. Uh, target rehabilita rehabilitation center. I don't think there can be a target. Sorry, I don't want to see. Remember, we saw that uh, bark spider last night. I want to see if that bark spider still around. It was here. It was, oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. Healy. And it caught something from last night. Look at that. It actually was successful with a, with a kill. That is nice. And I always say, like, early in the mornings, they will actually devour their own, their own web. And then... Uh, it, like late afternoon before it gets dark, they'll start s spinning a new web. But it looks like this bark spider, looks like this bark spider hasn't done that because it has caught, uh, looks like a wasp. It looks like a wasp, oh, eh, Panda? Yeah, it looks, like looks like a wasp, yeah. So it caught something, so it was successful spinning that web from last night. Looks like it was successful catching something in the in the web, like little wasps. So now it's just busy devouring it. So slowly, but you can see it's actually feeding on its prize. But it's also just sorry about that. Uh, it's like there's a little bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a wind. So because it's such a heavy spider, it's very heavy. It's a bulky spider. So you can imagine 
holding onto that web and uh, the wind blowing, it's just going to bounce up and down. But it's pretty much safe there. You can see now, you can see the wind in the back. Oh, gone. Oh, it's coming towards me, Panda. You're right there, man. Yo. As long as that thing doesn't get flung on top of me. <laughs> that wind had to come up at the wrong time. Eh? You can imagine that spider falling on me. Uh, uh, I would just, I would jump out here and run. I'll run back to camp. I won't even drive Rusty back. I'll let Panda take Rusty back. That thing had to fall in the air. I will not be seen. Look at that, just grabbing onto the prey. There we go. Mm, just getting rid of one or two things there. You can see she's really enjoying that. All right, well, we are going to just sit here and enjoy the sighting. I think let's head over to Amy as she has found a rhino midden. Thank you, Cedric. I'm so glad that you found uh, your box, box spider from last night. Well, everyone, I have found one of these rhino middens that I was speaking about earlier. And um, this is where a big male rhino would come and defecate. And you can see all the dung surrounding us here. It is humongous, <laughs> actually. And it's actually been dug away by the rhino that comes. And over here, you can actually see two big lines in the, in the ground here. And you can imagine if that big rhino bull, like the one that we saw yesterday, came here, dropped his dung, and then used his back legs like that to scrape these marks into the ground and while doing that he's getting his scent all over his legs and so as he walks along his uh, territory and the path that he goes on he leaves that scent behind. Now all around the edges you'll have dung from other rhinos that could be male or female um, and the, the females and any uh, subordinate or submissive males would leave their dung on the outside. Now, if the territorial bull comes back to this midden, I don't know, maybe he visits his middens once a week or something like that, and there's another bit of dung that isn't his right in the center of this pile, he takes that as a challenge from another bull that is trying to take over his territory. He'll actively seek out that bull, and that is when we have rhinos that actually have very actually quite scary fights and they can indeed be fatal now i'm just going to grab a little chunk of this dung let me see what's a good piece maybe something like this and then i'm going to come over to the vehicle jean ray you want to know if elephants also make use of middens and um, no, they do not. So elephants are not territorial animals. They have general home ranges that um, they use and they drop their dung anywhere and everywhere. They don't come back and use one particular spot over and over again. All right, so this is just to show you all that rhino that we're dealing with is indeed a white rhino. And have a look at the texture of this dung everyone very very soft very very smooth and um, you can see bits of grass all over here not really chunky at all and sometimes dung can be confused between elephants and rhino however with elephant you would find a lot more variation in the texture of the dung depending on the time of year but even if it is summer where there's lots and lots of grass around there's actually a little larvae inside of here moving. Don't know if we're going to get it. Let's just see if it comes out again. Um, and so then in elephant dung, you have a lot more leaves, pieces of bark, things like that. Whereas with white rhino, it's purely just grass. They are strict grazers. 
for the most part. Who knows, they may get a leaf in every now and again. There's that little guy. So that's some sort of larvae. I do, don't know exactly from which beetle, but that's actually in there to feed off the dung. And um, maybe turn into something a little bit later on in its life. <laughs> But there we go, white rhino dung from a rhino midden. I am gonna clean off the dashboard. Anna, Anna Marie, that's actually a great question. Um, you want to know if black and white rhinos ever share the same midden, and I have seen that before. I have seen, not necessarily they share it in that um, the black rhino will come in and um, sort of defecate right in the center and mix its dung with the white rhino, but I have seen, and I was actually checking that when we arrived here, if maybe off to the left or the right of this midden, there was a bit of black rhino dung, but it stands out quite a lot. It is a lot more full of what we call tannins because a black rhino is a browser, it eats a lot more leaves and twigs and stalks and things like that. And um, so the dung turns almost a rusty, a uh, little bit red sort of tinge to it. Um, and we, I have seen it before sort of on the edge of a white rhino midden, um, but it would be completely separate. Those two species don't really have anything to do with one another. Alright, well very very cool that I was able to show you that and tell you a little bit more about rhino middens everybody but we are going to keep moving hopefully find something else for you this morning before the end of the show really is turning into such a lovely day I think the whole of I don't know I don't we shouldn't <laughs> fingers crossed get any more rain today and I think by this afternoon we'll have a few more plains animals and things like that to be able to show you but still a lovely morning I mean I have just had a blast it really has been absolutely wonderful oh there's a bit bumps there that as things are warming up now that we may get some more visitors heading down towards the water um, there's a water hole just on our left hand side
going through quite a bushy spot there. And now we're gonna go uphill up some bumps, so hold on everyone. There was just a little group of red-faced mouse birds that flew past us. I was hoping this morning that we'd be able to pick up on some tracks of some cats, but we haven't yet. Yeah, we got a Koki Franklin, a male Koki Franklin that's here on the road. You can see the male with a beautiful orange head. No, don't go in. Very shy. Very, very shy. I actually call her Koki Franklin. Funny enough, thank you, Pucky, for giving me the idea about the, the name Koki. Someone asked, why do they call it a Koki Franklin? It's actually because of the, the noise they make. Koki, 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 Koki. Yeah, that's it. That's why they call it a Koki Franklin. <laughs> Obrigado. Como Sunani. Donkey Val. Well, that info. All right, so we still slowly ambling along here on the western boundary. Uh, I'm still trying to see if we can get any maybe tracks of uh, Shadulu the leopardess or her son, Nene, around the side. As I say, that's, uh, in the west they have, they've got no tracks of the two of them there. Nothing, they feel that they might be on Juma. It's a, uh, it's gone. Uh, sorry, it's still there. It's a little brown bird. We're going to try and see if we can get it there. It's going to be very difficult. You can see just, yeah. Uh, oh, it's gone. The, sorry, Panda. I do apologize. Sorry. It was a little brown bird, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> oh, sorry, Panda. Yeah. It was there. It was a brown bird. Not too sure what uh, what it was, but it was a brown bird. Interesting one. <laughs> it's a lovely morning. I really thought we we're gonna get some uh, some cats this morning. But it's all right. We've still got a bit of time. Maybe a last minute leopardium. Or Nene for Jordan. Jordan, you said you still haven't met Nene, so yeah, we'll try and see if we can, if we get lucky with him. Yeah, that's what I say. I'm working a little bit on the western side. It's the best area to, best area to kind of work to find him. But yeah, there's there's no tracks. Yeah, there's nothing, 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 nothing. send some comments and questions through as you know this is a live and interactive show 
please send comments and questions through for the morning for this Friday morning it has been a little bit of a slow morning um, really I was actually I was very I was so excited about everything but it just seems like uh, you know I was uh, very optimistic this morning when I went out I felt that we are gonna get some some crazy stuff but uh, usually it's like that usually it's always like that as soon as you force something as soon as exactly joy as soon as you force something it seems like that never happens that's nature nature will nature will decide when things when things should be revealed yeah boy. Say again. Say again. Yeah. It's not flat anymore there. Going which way? South. All right. Thanks so much. So we, we're trying to find. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out uh, uh, Chiller's um, den site at the moment. Um, it just seems like it's very quiet. Where it was flat, where she's been lying down, uh, that flat area has been like the grass has been pushed up again. So it's not. So it seems like she hasn't been lying there for a, like a day, a day or two. Maybe she's like kind of turned it up a bit. But I think she's still, there's nothing going south. So uh, we're just trying to find out where, you know, where she's moved to and all that. It's very important because then we know um, where to go and follow up and where to zone the area. Otherwise, zone means block the area off. Because if we, if we don't know that, if we don't know where she's moved to, then we don't know where to zone off. So, um, we just have to now and again, as I say, follow up on that situation and we can at least keep everybody up to date on uh, Chella's movements and that um, we're not putting pressure on it at all. Trust me, we will never do that. But we just now and again, just, just quickly look, just to take a look to see if she hasn't moved, in, moved to a new area. Because that's uh, many times lions will do that. If it's been compromised, area for the youngsters and the youngsters are getting a little bit older uh, let's move it to another place you know she knows the area so well so I wonder if she hasn't moved up further towards Chilapan hence her name Chilapan but that's uh, that's so uh, we shall keep you up uh, up to date with that all right uh, well, we're going to head up to the side. Let's head over to Amy as she has located on the tallest land mammal. Hmm. Hello and welcome back everyone. We have a giraffe who is now moving off slowly. I'm going to reverse and hopefully we can show him to you. He is a beautiful, very, very big dark giraffe. So just bear with us for a moment while we try and reposition and show you this animal. Unfortunately, it is on the right side of the road. There's no other sort of roads nearby to be able to get closer or anything like that. So. I can just see it looking at us through the trees. I'm going to try to reverse a bit more and pull. Maybe. Oh. Maybe we can get another view. It's not going to be ideal. Anything? Maybe through there. 
back. Okay. Okay. We made. There we go. Hello. There's one little gap that we can still see his face. He's checking us out. How lovely to see a giraffe. I was saying since yesterday that I'd like to see one. And so this is my first giraffe since back here at Juma. Now he is moving to the right. He, there is a little bit of a... Oh, he stopped again. If he does carry on moving to the right, there's a little bit of a clearing that we may be able to see him. I'm going to roll forward a little bit and pour because he start to feed there. I don't know. I know it's tricky everyone but that's the best view that we have right now. And you can see that mouth, have a look there, it's moving round and round. He is grabbing some leaves from the trees around him. There's a few russet bush willows that I can see in the area where he is. Oh, Neil, he is quite handsome, isn't he? Um, he's moving off again to the right. There he goes. I am going to reverse because if he does carry on, there is quite a big gap coming up just behind us. He might come into it there. I'll just have to give him a second. Hopefully he doesn't start feeding on one of those bush willows. <laughs> but there he starts to, I can just see his face popping out there now. <laughs> oh no, now he's moving back the other way. He's playing hide and seek with us today. Oh, there he is again. Thank you. And you can see those ears are completely facing backwards so that he can feed and listen to what's happening behind him. I think it's Kennedy. Uh, you are saying it's great to see your favorite animal, the giraffe. I'm so glad that we could show you a little bit of one. It's better than nothing, I suppose. But there's many, many more drives to come. So I'm sure that we'll be able to show you better views of giraffe in the future. But um, this is the best we've got for now. And we are going to enjoy it. To move over slightly everyone there is a vehicle coming and then we'll hopefully still be able to get that view
and there we go we can still see him feeding there through the trees i am hoping that he will continue his direction to the right of the screen and then we'll actually get a really nice open view of him as he passes by Now with giraffes, it's not uncommon to see one completely by itself. Although there may be more around that we just can't see. There are quite a few bushes here that could easily um, hide a giraffe, especially at the angle we're at. All right, uh, I'm coming on to Rebecca's now, one of the roads, just going a little bit further from uh, Zoe's, heading in the easterly direction. I just want to take a look. I know Columbus used this uh, drainage line many a time to come in here. Uh, I just want to see if there's any tracks coming in and out from this side for any kind of uh, female leopard. If so, you know, it's going to pretty much uh, narrow down. Uh, sorry, that was a stin book that just ran across there. Uh, it's going to narrow down on her uh, her area and all that and where she's coming from. So, yep, let's just double check. I still haven't really given up. You know, when uh, when I'm on a trail of uh, of something, uh, I'm not, you know, for me, I know myself personally, I, I struggle to kind of let go. I always get lured back to what I actually missioned out for this morning and that is uh, following up on uh, Tlalamba. Yeah, exactly George. Just uh, keep on trying as we say, keep on trying and there's always a success at the end of the of the adventure it's always a successful story and i'm hoping this is maybe not now but at least we can know what's happening at least i'm cancelling out uh, out certain areas As I say once again, I know the, my, my, my source, yeah, my source of information on, uh, on that Lambo and uh, the way he, he told me about the suckle marks and uh, the milk pouch at the bottom of a belly. Um, you know, uh, it's one of those guys that I'm not going to say, mm. no, it's a, it's a very experienced guide and he knows his stuff pretty well. And so I almost take take his word for it. So it's not just a speculation, because I don't run with speculation. I, I run with facts, true facts. And his word to me, his words to me is true facts. So. <laughs> Lucy, to see an elephant now would be remarkable, remarkable. Yeah, I know, Lucy, um, uh, Lucy, Lucy, everything has been elusive, 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 <laughs> Lucy, elusive, elusive. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Everything. Uh, Lucy, 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 Lucy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 been uh, a very very slow one this morning. Very slow. Not even tracks, as I said. I had Columbus tracks from where the gentleman left her last night and where she came out from. Um, but you know, there's no other kind of signs going further up. So there's no, no, there's no signs of her coming from that side, no signs of her coming from uh, Neola South. Well, I, haven't, I wasn't on Neola South this morning. I think uh, Amy might have been, so I don't know if she picked up on anything there, but yeah, no, nothing from here. Yeah. Nothing from us. But this is, this is just playing out for a, this is just playing out to become a fantastic afternoon. I can just see this Friday afternoon, the sunset safari, it's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. We are going to see so many things. Oh, maybe am I jinxing it now, Panda? <laughs> I, wasn't, I must just quickly touch some wood, yeah. Let me quickly just... There we go. There we go. I touched some wood. Don't, I don't want to jinx myself. Um, but it's going to be a great afternoon. Anyway, let's head over to Amy. I hope you're not jinxing yourself either, Cedric. But we have two birds of prey here. I know it looks like not much at the moment, but there was a beautiful brown snake eagle perched on top of a tree. And then there was a African harrier hawk as well that was flying. And there were a few birds that were mobbing them as well, some drongos and starlings. But of course, as soon as Jordan wanted to come to us, the snake eagle took off to the skies and we actually had both of them circling around here in front of us for a little while. Um, but unfortunately, the snake eagle's gone off to the right and the harrier hawk's gone way further back into the distance. So that is a, our view, which isn't bad. Very, very beautiful sitting here looking at that but unfortunately we can't show you what we wanted to show you everybody i'm so sorry but the snake eagle was um fully grown mature uh, completely brown with a beautiful golden eye um, and little sort of naked ankles as it were which told me straight away that it was a brown snake eagle and the harrier hawk i actually saw fly across the road um, and i could just see by sort of the general shape and size of the bird as well as quite a bright yellow piece on the face and a lot of barring um, underneath that that was a African harrier hawk. So the birds of prey are out and about. Hopefully that's a good sign for this afternoon. All right, well, we are going to slowly but surely start making our way a little bit further south. We're right top in the north of the reserve. And so there's a road right here on our left hand side that we are going to take and head on down back towards camp. And who knows, Cedric, I'm with you. Never give up, never lose hope. We don't know what we got bump on the way back in the last little bit of the show. It's always good to remember that this is the wilderness and we have no control over these animals and where they are and what they do. So it's a nice reminder to be incredibly grateful and amazed when we see the things that we see and we see some incredible things here on Wild Earth. But the day is not done yet, so we shall continue. Raymond, do you want to know if I've ever seen a live birth? I have not. 
No, I haven't. I've not been so lucky to see an animal being born. I've seen a baby elephant extremely soon after it was born. I can only assume it was maybe a few hours afterwards, but the actual birth itself, um, no, I haven't. We could actually even still see where the afterbirth was and everything, which was incredible. Uh, but a birth itself, no, I haven't. One day it may happen. One day, whether it may be an impala, maybe a buffalo, maybe, but maybe even a giraffe. That was also actually something when I was um, not guiding, but just in the in the Kruger National Park. We were driving in the south, and there was a whole bunch of vehicles stopped. And um, earlier that morning, a giraffe had actually given birth just next to the road, and everyone was sort of waiting, and no one had seen the little one get up or move um, and so they were wondering if maybe it was still born or something happened that went wrong and um, yeah we never actually found out the the end of that story but I remember just having that hours as well Yeah, we've got some nice uh, impalas. Oh, they're all running off now. Some young males. Two or three females. All right, now all of a sudden they're just running. Hmm. <laughs> For some reason, they, st they know when we go live. They know exactly. Uh, we've been chilling and relaxing and... Exactly, Jordan, that's what I just said. <laughs> we always think alike. Uh, anyway, looks like they have gone off. What else do you see, a panda? Oh, I hear ox pickers, but they are also going to fly off. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, Jordan. I think for some reason this morning everything just uh, has decided to run off, disappear, hide. Yeah. It's alright. It's a beautiful Friday morning. That's all I can say. It's good to be alive and enjoy another day. Look how beautiful is that Marilla tree. Beautiful Marilla tree. It's always such a nice setting with those clouds, blue sky, Marilla tree. All, with, all that we need now there is a, a leopard in that tree. Exactly. Well, it's quite surprising me, Jordan. It's amazing that this Marilla tree is not running off as well. Maybe this Marilla tree will migrate, do a migration. Maybe we come here this afternoon and it'll be gone. <laughs> no jokes, I think it will grow legs. The way it's going this morning, I think this will grow legs and just uh, like kind of move away from here. <laughs> Panda's doing a very good job just sticking with this marula tree. <laughs> That's what I love about this big open clearing. It's like all these all these marula trees that we've got here. And this is one of the beautiful ones. That's why it's always nice coming to this open clearing just to take a look. Very upright one, this long trunk. 
But that's usually with marula trees. You've got that long trunk and then it starts branching out a little bit higher up. If you've got like the false marula, you'll find it'll branch out much lower compared to the marula tree. slowly but surely they're going to start losing their leaves and once we get to about like May you'll find that this mirror tree there will be no green on top there that uh, hairstyle on top there the green hairstyle will be gone it'll be just branches typical going into like a almost like a dormant state Hello everyone, there is a little squirrel in the road on the left hand side. I don't know if it is going to stay or if it is going to go. Just on the left of the road and paw, in a little bit of leaves. There we go. It just ran away. Of course it did. <laughs> For the last little while we've been um, following some elephant tracks actually in the road and I was hoping maybe we would be able to get an Ellie for you all before the end of the drive but we are going to do one little last loop here everyone um, just in case it came onto these open clearings otherwise we have had a really wonderful morning I must say I know it has been quiet to some degree <laughs> but the start the sunrise oh my word it was amazing Nikki I couldn't agree more with you and even though there was less action today it still was a beautiful day in the bush who knows if we may be able to see these squirrels on this tree. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. <laughs> they were just around here. Yeah. There it comes up the tree on the left hand side. There they go. There they go. There they go. <laughs> and um Cedric's just come past us he's ending off his drive as well but everyone thank you so much for a wonderful time together this morning we do appreciate it all your comments and your questions as well and I hope that this afternoon you'll join us once again for on safari at 3 p.m. and then your sunset safari at 3 30. I hope you have a lovely day ahead